Welcome to the Purpose to Create podcast with Natasha Wright, a business podcast for photographers and creative preneurs who want to level up as they pursue their purpose to create. Lean in as we connect, inspire, and impact you as you build and grow your business. I'm so hyped that you're here and listening to today's show. Today's guest is Jamesa Adams, who happens to be a fellow Turk. Go Turks! Yes, go Turks! Yes! She is the founder and visionary of Jane Eyre Weddings and Events, which is a premier boutique planning agency located in Washington, D.C. Aside from planning amazing events, she also loves spending time with her family and watching the evolution of her two-year-old son, Terrence, little TJ, my little buddy. In today's episode, we're chatting all about just getting started. Hey, Jay, welcome to the show. Hey, Natasha. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get into this conversation because this topic is so important. And I think that we need to just dive right into this conversation. First, can you tell us a little bit about your journey as a creative and your mompreneur? (laughs) I want to know all the juicy details. Yes. Being a mompreneur is definitely a different kind of beast. It's that extra element in addition to being an entrepreneur, (laughs) I have to say. But I've transitioned into it very well, but I am really excited to be here to be a part of the podcast. You know, yesterday I just celebrated five years in business and it was really a great feeling to be a part of so many interesting love stories and journeys and different milestones and occasions over the last five years. And I felt very grateful and just honored. And it was very humbling just to see how far I've come as an entrepreneur and then within the last two years as a mom. And I will tell you that I feel like I'm only as good as my family that supports me. Without my family, I really don't have a business. Without my parents, you know, to get TJ, to watch my son, to help him, we scheduled the calendars together. If I book a client, it's not just me booking. I'm like, okay, well, let me talk to my family (laughs) and see, you know, if this is the right client, are we able to do this? I think so often people see entrepreneurs and business owners, but it's really the people that are behind him that really takes you to the next level and where you're able to go. Because yes, we we are masterminds. We are creators. We can do a lot. But without the support of them, I really would not be able to do what it is that I do. So I'm very grateful and thankful for them. And they've been a great part in my entrepreneurial journey. And TJ is very much a part of your business because you take him along to venue walkthroughs and things like that, right? Yes. So I will say being a mom and entrepreneur, first of all, it's made me better. It's made me more aware of boundaries that I need to set for my business to be better with time. You know, before I had TJ, I would work all kinds of hours of the night. I didn't have a cutoff time and I would just run myself ragged, which is just poor business practice. I mean, I've learned a lot, you know, as you evolve as creative to not do that, but starting out, it was not any form of balance, but having TJ really helped me to set boundaries to stick to my hour so that I'm able to commit the time of being a mom and spending with my son, but also allowing my clients to understand that these are my targeted hours. These are my, you know, set office standards. And in order to work with me, this is what is required from you. But in return, here's what I'm going to give you. And I think, you know, my clients have been so amazing and awesome in this motherhood journey and being an entrepreneur because they don't allow me to miss a beat and they're just as involved with myself and teach, you know, in the process and understanding. But I will say, I think when you offer a level of service that is just impeccable, people will have a little bit more of softness or kindness towards you when they see how hard it is that you're really working and also doing that, you know, with a child. For me, I typically try not to work on the week Weekends. We have events on the weekends, but I let my clients know. I say, hey, if we have to do a Saturday morning, you know, or <laughs> a Saturday afternoon, please understand my assistant TJ will be attending the walkthrough with us or the meeting because unfortunately, you know, these are the days that I don't work. And, you know, once you tell the clients that they, they have the option to say yes or no. And crazy enough, TJ has done some amazing tastings. He's done some great walkthroughs. 
you know, for the weekend time. And, and I laugh at it, but I don't think that having TJ or him a part of the journey has really taken away from my professionalism. But I think people see me different. Now, of course, I have some clients where I'm like, okay, absolutely not. TJ is not coming to this meeting because you just already know. And, and then you have to pick and choose, okay, you know, this, because you do have some clients or some meetings and you, it's just not, it's not going to work. But cake tastings, TJ, he loves to come to cake tastings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> authors, yes. Um, and TJ is very good. And it's so funny because I think the industry peers have really adapted to me being a mom and TJ as well. And they always ask about TJ or, you know, he's a part of me. He's a part of my brand, a part of my business. And I just feel really blessed to be able to incorporate that part of my life in addition to doing what I love. So it's fun. <laughs> I love that. So tell me a little bit about Jamesa and how you became a wedding planner. So, okay. <laughs> I, like, I have a very non-traditional approach to how I got started in the business. You know, I've shared my story plenty of times before. You know, I'm a co-author of the Planners Unplugged book, and I spoke about my journey and how I got started. But I actually started my business at the tail end of a divorce, and I felt like I spent so much time actually planning the wedding. But sometimes when I look back, I say, what was my investment in planning? planning as far as a solid foundation of the marriage and, and being financially sound. And once I went through the whole planning process myself, I spent so much time curating this wedding baby. And I felt like I suffered from postpartum wedding depression because it's like, it's like the same thing. And you're just like, oh my gosh, well, what am I going to do now? And so, you know, I started helping, you know, people just kind of come up with ideas for events and, you know, uh, different type of details and decor and just various ideas. And and my friend Casey, who's also a podcaster, shout out to Casey from yes, Babies and Bellinis. Bellinis. Yes, I love Babies and Bellinis. You got to tune in. <laughs> But um, Casey was actually my friend. We have been friends for, for several years. We've been friends since we were 15, 16 years old, cheering on an all-star cheerleading team. But she, you know, said, you know, well, why don't I let you do my wedding? And so that was the first, like, for real planning experience that I got. And I was just one person. This was before I had a team. I had a website. I mean, before I was really <laughs> a documented, like, solidified business owner. But, you know, I took the opportunity and it really gave me an eye-opening experience to what opportunities were out there. I enjoyed being a part of the process and just for her allowing me to do it. And, you know, I did the wedding. There was a lot of lessons learned. Um, it was very successful, beautiful wedding. Um, it was featured on Essence. And after that, I think the bug just kind of bit me. And I said, you know what, let's, let's see what else is out there. What else is next? And I just got started. And I think, you know, had I not just gotten started, just took the opportunity. I don't know if I would have really gotten to the entrepreneurial business. I never worked for an event planning company before or shadowed or intern or any of that. I just knew that I wanted to be a business owner and that I wanted to help people, but I didn't really know what the capacity would be and how I would be able to help people. And I would say for maybe three years prior to even doing that, I just held on to like a business name and just kind of idea of what my business would look like, but I never implemented or really put it into play until after I did Casey's wedding. And then after that, I would say January Weddings and Events was officially born and I got started. And that's actually where you and I met. I was yeah. the computer for that wedding. Exactly, exactly. And you know, if, and let me just speak on that because I always say that life is like its own algorithm. And, you know, every connection or event that you attend or where you are, people are very important. And I've always put my focus on people when I got started in the business or even before being a business owner, just in life, because the connections and what you need to get to the next level resides in people. It doesn't reside in assets or things. It's in people. And it's really building those connections and networks because that's that's really what makes you who you are. And, you know, I, and I have to laugh 
laugh because we've been friends, you know, for the past five years, you know, since I started this business and you've been with me in the infancy, but I totally forgot that that's where we met at the Hotel Monaco in Alexandria. We were sitting in the back eating our vendor meals, having a conversation and just you being so kind and open, you, was, you know, started talking to me and asking, oh, you know, you're the planner. Well, I'm Natasha. I'm a photographer. We should collaborate, work together. And we did. And I think just being open to people and just communicating and connecting with them. I didn't know in that moment what our relationship was going to be or what was to come, but some great things have come out of that little conversation over food in the back of the hotel at the Hotel Monaco. You know what I mean? But it, it changed my life and it changed our trajectory and our path and who we became. You know, even now, five years later, talking on a podcast, your podcast, you know, me being in business for five years. I mean, it, it's something that's monumental. And I just think that oftentimes, people can overlook the people aspect of the business and how important it really is to build relationships because you're only as good to me as the people that you know. And to me, you know, your network is your net worth. Most of my business is referral based. It comes from people. I do get business, you know, I would say from social media and Instagram, Facebook, you know, a little bit on the website, but the majority of my business is from referrals from real people and past clients. And that that's monumental because that's not something that you have to pay for, but you put an investment in your business, your experience, the level of detail and service that you're giving to the clients. And they, they, don't forget that. They don't forget that special moment. And that's the investment that you make as a business owner to draw and attract new business from the level of service and attention that you give to every client. So, I mean, again, just getting started. <laughs> we are okay. just getting started. <laughs> just getting started. And you're also getting started in expanding your business to Yes. So I want to hear all about that. And I mean, I know about it and we're, you know, at this point we're business besties and we share a lot with each other. But for the listening ears of the audience, I would love for you to talk about how, you know, at year five, you're now expanding your business, the evolution. I mean, five years ago, again, we had no clue where this would end up, but now you're able to expand. So let's talk a little bit about the expansion and even just getting started with that. And how did you know it was time for your business to grow? Wow. So let's talk about the expansion. I will say that after having TJ, I got to a point where I was just like, you know what? I really just want to do my business full time. I don't want to work anymore and do consulting stuff. And I was in the aerospace and defense industry for quite some time and I did government contracting, but nothing was as fulfilling as being a mom and doing my business and what it is that I really loved and enjoyed. And, you know, I said, in order to do that, I have to make some changes so that I'm able to still be sustainable in the industry and to expand my portfolio. You know, I love doing the wedding and the love stories for, you know, quite some time, but I would say the past two seasons, I felt like I worked every single weekend and I didn't get the time to spend with TJ and to be a mom and to take him out in the summer because I was always working. And I really didn't want to do that anymore. And so I said, I want to diversify my portfolio to give me more opportunities to plan it and do events, but also to give me some flexibility on the weekends, you know, where we would primarily have weddings so that I can spend time being a mom and doing things that I love or just having, you know, self-care for myself because that is really, really important. And I just feel like, you know, if you don't really step back and assess what's really important in the time you have to spend with your family, like that's not something that we get back. I feel like as human beings, we're always so, you know, oh, I have time. I have time. I have time. And no, we really don't have time. Time is the one thing that no one is in excess of. It's yeah. always something that's constantly deteriorating. It's yeah. going away. It's decreasing and you have to maximize your time. And it's really, and I think time is the one thing of why it's so important to get started because I feel like, yeah, I set on starting my business for about three years, but then I feel like I set on rebranding and not really jumping out there and just saying, okay, of course you want to curate the proper content at the right time and because you want it to be polished and I would say to really make sure that your brand is everything that you desire for it to be. You don't want to have steps, so you definitely want to get out there. But at the same time, people are waiting on you to get started. And God will really give you the talents and gifts that you need, the resources and the tools, but you just have to get started. And sometimes I sit and think about, you know, had I not waited, you know, the three years to get started, how many people could I have helped or what I have done, even with the rebrand? You know, there's people out there that need us, but 
at the same time, they're waiting on us. <laughs> they're right. waiting on us to get started so that God can do his job and the moving parts and pieces and really bring it all together. And I just think that that's so important. And so with the expansion and the rebrand, you know, we are doing corporate and social events. I am training for my CMP, you know, and you know, I said, I was just a flat out business owner. So I was not a, you know, a wedding event planning, um, you know, professional prior to starting my business I literally like just started a business and it's so funny to see like I think how well I've done and how far I've come by not doing that I think that had I done some shadowing of mine I encourage entrepreneurs to do so I would have done that prior to now looking back but you know I can't change the past I learned a lot of things made a lot of mistakes But, you know, I'm at a point right now where I think I've really found out who my targeted client is, even getting into my proper niche and also just understanding you're either my target client or not, why or why not. And once you're able to answer those questions as a business owner or entrepreneur, I think it takes you a long way. It helps you to save a lot of time and to be a bit more efficient in doing your business because you have an understanding of what it is that you're able to provide, who you service and why you service them. Right. And so I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier is that it took you about three years to get started. You kind of set on what you wanted to do. Can you talk a little bit about any challenges that you were facing that stopped you from, you know, starting your business? Mm -hmm. And so let's circle back. So let's not even go to start the business. I want to talk about the rebrand and the expansion because I think it's probably just kind of cynical and what costs, because sometimes we are our worst enemies and critics in, in really getting started. And, you know, I feel like in sugar from uh, Taylor and Hope has just been amazing and working with me over the last year. I love you, sugar and our, thank you. <laughs> but, you know, I, I started my project last year and for whatever reason, it just seemed like I just couldn't put the focus and attention on getting the actual content and branding finished. And I just felt like I was a horrible client. Like I just wasn't invested in, you know, I'm spending all this money and it, it was challenging. You know, my dad prior year had got diagnosed with stage three prostate cancer and colon cancer. I um, rented out my home. I moved in with my parents, you know, my son to be there for my dad to help, you know, him with the care and the treatments to support my mother, you know, who was taking him to radiation every single day. And it was just very challenging. I think, you know, feeling a little bit, you know, defeated, trying to be there for your family and then being a mom and just working. And it was just a lot. And I just kept on trying to press through it. And then in addition to that. It's like I refused to get behind the camera to do pictures or any type of video because I was still dealing with that kind of postpartum this, just being a mom and not being comfortable how I looked and just my weight and just overall feeling. It was all of these things that were just holding me back from really going to the next level, but it was self-derived and self-driven. And, and it was very hard to try to overcome that and get to the next point. And I'm so grateful for, you know, Taylor and Hove for actually just <laughs> working with me regardless. And, you know, when I had to postpone just to pick back up and now to even be at the point, you know, where we're like almost there complete with the rebrand. I'm just really excited um, and, and how far I've gone. But I said all that to say, because my boyfriend, Corey, he, he's really amazing. And without Corey, I don't think I would have gotten to the next level because I think at the point of time where we started dating, I was just down and just depressed and just not really in a good space. And he really kind of came and put the life back in me, the excitement back in life. And, and even being a mom, like he made that more enjoyable for me because we like do that together. And it wasn't just him going on a date with me, but it was a date with me and TJ. Right. <laughs> And that really, really helped me to enjoy parenting more life a little bit more and and just to kind of get some happiness and joy back into the business. And so that's really been a catalyst to help me to get to the rebrand, the expansion, and just to do it and just to get started. And sometimes we all need people just to kind of uplift us, encourage us, and just say, okay, I understand you're going through a difficult time right now. However, we still have things to accomplish to do. Get up, (laughs) dust yourself off, and let's keep moving. But I would say before even starting the business, 
you know, I held on to it for three years because, you know, I think just at the time, you know, where I was and just with my ex-husband and everything, I just didn't have like the confidence, wasn't really sure, you know, if this will work, if I should get, you know, even get started. I wasn't really sure how to get started, you know, and I think that just based on the type of relationship that I was in and the environment, it just wasn't really fostering for me to really get started. But deep down inside, I always had that seed. I had a name and, you know, what the name was going to be why and what I wanted to do, but I just didn't get started because of fear. And I think, you know, I meet so many new planners or even business owners and they're always just like, well, how did you get started? How did you get started? And to be quite honest, the hardest part is just getting started. That's it. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the it. hardest part because once you get started, everything will start to evolve and take a life of its own and you just don't know the direction, but you'll just build and grow and excel as you go along. But it's just getting started. And so for me, you know, it was my friend, you know, saying, hey, I, you know, your wedding was so beautiful. You did a great job, you know, the planning and details. I think you have something. So I think you can do mine. And, and so Casey gave me the chance. And I think so often when you see, you know, spiritual talents and gifts in other people, I think sometimes it doesn't hurt to just encourage them and just to foster them and say, you know, look, you have a gift, you have a talent just try, just give it a try. It's funny. I did a 40th birthday celebration um, while I was in New York. Um, what was it last week or two weeks ago? And I was in New York for the wedding, but my team was here in DC doing the 40th birthday celebration. And I had a vendor, um, Edwina from Everything Lux Decor. She did a beautiful balloon arch and display and it was so gorgeous. And I know you came and documented some of it and took some photos for the event. And I saw Nafa from Judah Avenue. She had posted on Facebook her daughter Vivian's birthday, which was spectacular. Oh my gosh, it was so gorgeous. And Edwina had done the balloon for that as well. And so it was funny because I said, I love Edwina. She's, you know, amazing and a great creative and she's great at what she does and everything was beautiful. And Nafa said, you know, before years ago, you know, it wasn't a thing. And, and she actually kind of coached Edwina into doing this, you know, as a professional builder because she yeah. said, hey, you have some talent, you have some gifts, you should, you know, you know, do this. And then she did. And I just thought it was so funny because you just never know, you know, who the next potential is or what spirit or gifts arise in other people. And sometimes it's you that you have to help and encourage them to really just to get started because you're, again, you're only as good as your network and your network is your net worth. And, it, and it's a, this is a people driven business, but you know, people say money makes the world go round. I don't believe that people make the world go around because people know people and it's because of people that you know the world is still turning and existing every single day well that in addition to god but you know i won't i won't take away god's you know, miracles and creating wow. the entire earth and all of the elements and beings of it That's but, right there. yeah but people make the world go around if you ask me so it's definitely not money so right and yeah. i mean all of this all goes back to what you said earlier you're only as strong as your support system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's super important. It's really important. If you don't have those people speaking life into you, you also have to be careful who you have speaking into your life in whatever season you're going through. Because right. it can be pivotal in how you want to move forward next. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's really important to highlight that, like you said, you had the right people speaking into your life who are not going to let you wallow too long. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's important because if you don't have the right people and the right connections in your life, then you're just setting yourself up <laughs> to be exactly. in a state of, you know, depression or just feeling like you're unable to move forward and just being stuck in that spot. And it's, it's, it's easy to get into that spot, but I feel like it's even harder to get pulled out of that spot. And, and I'm grateful and thankful for the support system that I do have. And, you know, the support system of my family to actually do my business, but let's also talk about the support system of industry peers, because without my industry peers, I really don't think that I would be able to even do what I do. And that's just equally as important. You know, people need the Natasha rights, the Chips, the Zards, you know, those were the people that really helped me early, early in business to get started. The Shelby's and the K Wootens, you know, without people like that, 
I'm not sure that I would have really evolved like I did because of just people being so kind and generous and really wanting to see you succeed and doing everything they can to help and to really get you excited about the business and the industry and what it has to offer. And I think that's something that's really important as well is having the right support system within your industry (laughs) to be able to grow and excel. Exactly. And it may not even be someone who's a wedding planner. It may be somebody who is a florist. You know what I mean? It may be somebody who's a a baker. It doesn't have to necessarily be somebody who is in your same, you know, industry, but somebody. Right. Right. That's in your same line of work, but still contributors of the industry. Yeah. And I think that's important because, you know, I, all of my friends or people that really started me out in the business were photographers. (laughs) They weren't (laughs) other event planners. Now I have, you know, my network of event planners and there's so many great ones. Um, and you know, like, uh, Tiffany from Simply Breathe Events and Shalise Sensational Soirees and Ashley and Kristen from Elle Nicole. I mean, Melissa from Be Astonished and D. you know, there's so many good people and planners that I really connect with, have built relationships with, because that's what really helps you to get to the next level. And sometimes, you know, just event and just as a planner and just say, okay, look, I'm going through a rough time. Can you help me? You know, even when I had TJ and my son and just, you know, when I was pregnant, you know, Mahalia from uh, Say Bell and Nellie from Event Design Group, they helped me for my weddings, you know, or events to, to get through the season because I was having a major life change coming. And And if you don't build those relationships within your industry, I say that will stifle you or inhibit you from being able to do what it is that you need to do and effectively because we all need help sometimes. And I'm never, you know, a person that's not willing to help out my fellow planner or colleague or friend because let me just tell you, it goes a long way. I've gotten so much referral in business from my planner friends and colleagues than I feel like I had from any other resource of a wedding wire than not. No, it's right in the plan community. And that's how strong my relationships and friendships are with the community. And if you don't have that, you know, in addition to your support system to your business, then you're in some major trouble. <laughs> you, you really are. You really are. You really have to cultivate those relationships, right? Like it's not about what can you do for my business, but how can I help you? Exactly. Exactly. How can I help you? And sometimes the, how can I help you is is all that you need to really jumpstart you and to get you in the right place, get you in front of the right people. Um, you know, this year, you know, we took on doing the black on wine and spirits festival. It's happening, you know, next month. And I, you know, was like, okay, for doing a festival, who can I talk to? Who can I connect with? to be able to understand some elements that I would not quite necessarily know or would forget in doing a festival. And I um, reached out to Yodi and from a favorite by Yodi and I spent, well, I mean, we spent probably 45 minutes on the phone, but she was so resourceful and so helpful and willing to just drop any gems she could and just to help me to really level set for the festival. And I just appreciate it so much because you just don't know like how people just have the knowledge within them. And if you build the right relationships and it's not something where you're just always taking from people, but just a genuine kind relationship and to support people, encourage them to cheer everybody else on Then I don't know that I would have necessarily gotten that, you know, the information that I needed. And I just appreciated her so much because it really helped me to be able to come up with the strategy of how to execute this festival. And I'm really excited about the festival. It's something different in our new um, portfolio of work and taking on a different scope. So I think it's going to be really, really awesome. I know it's going to be awesome, um, but I'm excited about it. But I just... Are you able to talk about it? Yes. So the Black Old Wine and Spirits Festival is happening um, at Doc 5. It's on September 28th from 2 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Um, it's founded by Chanel Turner, who is the CEO of Fudre Vodka, and her mom, Marlene Turner. Um, this is going to be their fourth year in the festival. Um and that's growing and evolving and it's giving people an opportunity for the locals to come and see what type of black owned wine and spirits vendors are out there. Vendors across the country are coming. So um, definitely on their um, social media, um, they have a website. So you can go to that if you want to be a vendor. And for the vendors, you don't have to necessarily be um, in the wine or spirits industry. It can be any type of vending. So if you have any type of um, 
plant-based items or anything, you know, that's vegan or, you know, natural. I mean, there's so many different um, entities out there that would be a good vendor to showcase their work at the festival. I highly encourage you to do that. And then if you want to just come as a guest, then of course, just come and, you know, purchase a ticket. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. And I think it's definitely cool and, and glad to be a part of it. Oh, I'm really excited to hear that. And tell me a little bit more about expanding into the corporate space. Is that very different from wedding planning? Yes, extremely different. I would say it's extremely different because, and it's it's funny because I would say with weddings, it's very much so more emotions involved. You have a lot of different players as far as family members that have their opinions. And then, you know, just with the budgets and it's just so much involved, you know, with the wedding planning process. Not to say that it's not with corporate, but with the corporate is very straightforward. You have your request for proposal or the required work that is needed. Here is, um, you know, the targeted price. Can you do the work? Yes or no. And you just do it. You don't have to really go through a lot of the mechanics of, you know, um, I would say with, well, my mom really likes this dress, but I like this or that. No, you are the expertise in going to the um, client and just specifically saying to them, okay, well, here's what we need. Here's what I recommend. You do that for wedding planning, but I think wedding planning is just a little bit more involved. I would say with corporate, a lot of times the work isn't as long as far as the journey. So with wedding planning, it's like 12 to 18 months for the corporate clients that I have worked with at least over the last year, I would say it's been more so like six months, some maybe, you know, nine months, even, you know, three months, but it's a shorter tenure. Um, and then I would also, you know, say that you're compensated more for the <laughs> for the for the weddings, at least in my case, you know, I, from what I've experienced, but but there, are, you know, are differences, and I think that it's very different. Um, you know, a lot of times they are looking for someone that is a certified meeting professional, and then they also have the CMPG, which is um, you know, to do government um type of work, and I mean, there's different levels to it, just like anything, you know, there's levels to this, <laughs> and so, you know, I'm just branching out and branching out, but I've even been just so grateful with people that I have met in the wedding industry that have referred me for the corporate and social events because without them, I wouldn't have gotten the um, business that I've gotten this year if it hadn't been for the relationships that I've already had that were pre-existing. So I think it's really, really important for the relationships part. That's so important in any business because without that, you really can't do business. You know, you can be a wedding planner all day, but without the vendor relationships, you don't have a wedding. You don't have, yeah. you know, an event. You don't have anything, you know, so that's really important. Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is a very unique name and very memorable. But Jane Eyre also speaks to Jamesa and who you are as a woman. So I want to spend a little time talking about how'd you come up with the name Jane Eyre? And if you can leave us with something that you want us to remember about Jane Eyre weddings and events, what would that be? What, what does that legacy look like for you? Hmm. That's, that's a very impactful question there. So first I'll say I often laugh because people that I don't know or that I haven't met refer to me as Jane. <laughs> <laughs> and, but no, my name is Jamie. So it's not Jane, but my business is Jane Air. But people just call me Jay or I just tell them to call me Jay for short. But it's funny because I actually got started with my business name, my ex-husband and my name is a combination of the two and the wedding website that we had was called gojane.com. And so I just kind of held on to Jane. Um, and then air, I'm really obsessed with uh, royalty inheritances, um, heirloom items, things of that nature, estates. And so that's where I got the air portion from. But let's kind of go back a little bit because my favorite musical, it's also a book, is called Jane Eyre. And Jane Eyre is about an orphan girl. I mean, she went through a hard time, a hard life. My favorite song from the musical is called Forgiveness. And then that's a very powerful song. But I think just what I went through just in my marriage and just going through, you know, a divorce, I felt like I had inherited those things. And it's something that I couldn't necessarily leave behind because it got me started in my business. And when you think about an heir or an heiress, you know, that's what they are. You know, they're the inherited of 
an estate, um, very royal and regal. And it just spoke to me, you know, as that name and just being forgiving of what, you know, I experienced, but being able to forgive myself and to move forward and start a business. And so I, I did that. And it was kind of hard because I felt like it's not a common name. It's not something that is just like any other event name. <laughs> it's very, you know, meaningful and it really speaks to my brand and jewel tone colors, which I absolutely love and adore. Um, Dolce and Gabbana just did a new uh, runway show and I saw just the colors and the details and oh my gosh, like every time they do a runway um, show, it, it just speaks to me. Like Dolce and Gabbana, it would probably be, if there was a brand that I feel like embodies my brand. <laughs> It would be them, just the colors and everything regal and just, you know, crowns and I don't know, just how, you know, things are. But I it helped me to form this thing called um, the heiress mentality. And the heiress mentality is really, that is my legacy. That is what is going to be left behind um, when it's all said and done. Who am I, you know, as a business owner, as a creative? And I actually um, spoke a little bit about... Um, the heiress mentality when I did my branding video with Elena um, from uh, what is, Bell Imagery, Bell Imagery Portraits. Yeah, she did my rebrand. She is, oh my gosh, Elena is amazing. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's yeah. a whole nother conversation. I, I mean, that's a whole nother podcast right there. That's who needs to be the next guest. <laughs> okay. yeah, so Elena was on season one. Okay. She's really dope. She did my some brand work for me and my brand video as well. And I, I love her to pieces. I'm definitely going to have to have her back on maybe for season three. Now that you mention it, I, we can, she and I, we can talk for hours. So I'm sure we can come up with something else. To talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's no, she's super amazing. But so there was this Dolce and Gamana runway show and I saw one of the models going down the runway and she was adorning this crown. It was beautiful and it had these ruby jewel tone jewels on it. And I was just obsessed with it. And I took a screenshot of the image and I created this uh, quote and it really embodies the heiress mentality and it's hold your head high and never allow your crown to shift into any direction. Allow the jewels to be adorned at all times. Show what it means to be a queen and ruler of all things in life. And that is what Jane Eyre Weddings and Events is all about. And that is what we call the heiress mentality. <laughs> and when I think about my legacy and my brand and what I will leave behind, that is exactly what I want people to know that, you know, you're going to go through life's challenges and experiences, but maintain your posture, always hold your head high and just know that you are still royalty. You are still a queen and that you still have a lot of things to conquer and rule in this world and don't allow anything to stop you from being able to do that, regardless of how hard it is, how tough it is. At the end of the day, no one can take away you know, your royal highness, I mean, they can't. You're a queen regardless all day. So at the end of the day, you are the ruler of your destiny. You are the ruler of your business or your storefront, whatever it is for any business owner or creative. You know, we are the rulers of all things. There's a lot for us to conquer. We can't get easily defeated. And you have to have an army of people behind you. You know, you have to have the colleagues, the industry peers, your family and friends, because the support system behind you is, is really what's going to be the driving force that also keeps you going forward as well. You can do a lot on your own for so long, but is that sustainable? No. You really need, you know, those good people to really collectively help you to get to the next level. So thank you so much, Natasha, for allowing me to be a part of your podcast today, The Purpose to Create. <laughs> yes, honey. Yes. I appreciate it. And just talking about just getting started, because at the end of the day, you know, I accepted the Rising Star Award um, at the Planner Seat Conference about two years ago. And when I gave my acceptance speech, and shout out to Janelle. Hey, Janelle. <laughs> but when I gave my acceptance speech, you know, I made it very clear that each and every single one of us has a unique creative ability that only God has instilled within us. And we are the superpowers. We put on the capes and go out in the world and really make a game-changing difference. We are the people that inspire people, that other people, that are there for their special love journey or moment. 
And without those special gifts and talents, you're really doing the world a disservice. And I think we all have to, you know, really look within ourselves and say, what is it that I have to give and contribute to the world, you know, to the earth, even to my community, whatever it is, whatever level expansion that it is, just understanding that only we can give that to the world. And so often we spend so much time comparing ourselves to one another and, you know, just, just getting on social media or just feeling like, you know, we're not enough, but understand that you are enough. We all contribute something, every single person, no matter what scale, what level that you are. I mean, the littlest of ants on the earth are here contributing something. So please believe <laughs> Your own self can contribute something to yes. you. Your own self a disservice. You mm-hmm. can give yourself a disservice. So not only is somebody waiting on you, but you need you to show up. Right. 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 <laughs> oh man. I mean, this conversation has just been so rich. And tell us how we can stay connected to you after the show. Yeah, so please stay connected with us. You can follow us on Instagram at Jane Eyre, J-A-Y-N-E-H-E-I-R. We are on Facebook, facebook.com backslash Jane Eyre Weddings. The website, www.janeair.com. okay? And if you ever, you know, just want to connect, you can send me an email. It's my first name, Jamesa at janeair.com, and that's J-A-M-E-S-A. And I look forward to connecting with you. Thank you. I'm super excited. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you for listening to the Purpose to Create podcast. Share, like, comment, or review this episode. Check out the show notes at www.purposetocreatepodcast.com and connect with us online at Purpose to Create.